Hey everyone, this is Alex with another Rapid Fire Review. This time for Double Fine's trippy platformer Psychonauts 2. It's been over 15 years since the first Psychonauts was released. And the first game was originally a massive financial failure at launch, only selling about 100,000 retail copies. But has since developed a cult following and has sold 1.7 million copies digitally. In other words, Psychonauts! The rest of you will die! Oh. The renewed interest in the franchise allowed the game's developers to crowdfund Psychonauts 2, raising almost $4 million for its development. Now for me, it's been a long, long time since I rented the first game at Blockbuster, but I remember enjoying the wacky story and characters, clever level design and psychic powers, and voice acting from Richard Horvitz, who also voiced Invader Zim, an early aughts Nickelodeon classic. The grand head of the Psychonauts, and father of Lily Zanotto, my girlfriend. Although, the term is still very fresh and might need fact-checking before we go to print. This new game picks up right where the last one left off, in design and in story. Though if you didn't play the first or simply don't remember, they do a really good job getting you all caught up with the story elements. The first one is by no means a requirement to play the second. For the story, you play as Raz, a young psychic intern at the legendary Psychonaut Agency. The head of the Psychonauts was recently kidnapped and is in a coma, and there's a mole in the organization. To make matters worse, there's a cabal trying to resurrect an evil baddie, Maligula. The story is told almost entirely in puns, wordplay, and dad jokes, humor that I certainly appreciate. Katie? Is that you? Ah! It's just got a lot of... Hey! hey! That wasn't so bad! Ready to fry up that cute little bacon chef! When does it start fulfilling all of our unachieved ambitions? Right after we use its identity to hide our excess taxable income. Which reminds me. Don't forget to tip your nurses, you cheapskates. Once we get caught up with the story intro, we get the gameplay intro. A long one. It stretches beyond the intro mission into the main base area. And all of its sub-areas. And even more into the next mission. We learned to use the variety of psychic powers, the upgrade and item systems, and we made a huge cast of characters all at once. At this point in the game, I was pretty worried. I'd only gotten brief glimpses of the absolutely bonkers game promised in the trailers, and that I was expecting to see. Without the craziness of the level design and writing, the gameplay mechanics just aren't special enough to carry the game on their own. Nothing this far had been bad. But I was getting bored, and for a game that's only 8 to 10 hours long, and it's supposed to be about diving into the trauma-filled minds of mentally and emotionally broken people, the first few hours being mild isn't what I was expecting at all. Fortunately for me, and the game's score, the game does pick up and starts getting more and more focused. In the casino theme level that comes next, things get more interesting. We get boss fights and puzzles and story writing that's engaging enough. The game really hits its stride, though, when you meet Agent Bool and delve into his brain. You end up in a surreal cooking game show run by goat puppets called Ram It Down. It's time for... Ram It Down! Then you are tasked to run around a platforming obstacle course and chop up and cook enthusiastic audience members who are also the ingredients within the time frame allotted. Then you have your dishes eaten by the panel of goat judges. Uh, it's incredible and it's weird and it's everything I wanted this game to be. From here on out, which is about halfway point of the game, the game delivers on all of the promises of the trailers and the teasers. We get all the demented content we wanted, crazy psychedelic level designs that take us from like a Woodstock-esque festival to deranged amusement park rides, all while dealing with mental health topics in a surprisingly competent fashion. The game definitely finishes strong, despite its really soft start. As for playing the game and its mechanics, we get the standard fare of psychic powers, along with some new fun additions. There's mind bullets and telekinesis, levitation, fireballs, time slowing, and a paper craft projection of yourself that's voiced by Ricky Simmons, you may recognize as the voice actor for Gurr. Yeah.
The platforming and combat are pretty solid all the way through. The psychic powers allow for a slightly better than standard experience, roaming the world, fighting baddies and bosses, looking for collectibles, power-ups, and puzzle solving. There are a few notable things that did feel unfinished, or at least unpolished. I spent a bit of time being pissed at the camera angles that were far from ideal in a platforming game with four or five jump options. But since it's only a slight loss of life for falling down, it wasn't more than an annoyance. There are also stopping points in many levels in the game that you won't know are coming until it's too late meaning you won't be able to pick up the power-ups and collectibles in the area that you can see without the level stopping you. Again, it's a minor inconvenience since none of them are vital to leveling up or upgrading, but it still pissed me off. The most jarring, though, were the cinematics and the transitions in the game. Sometimes we get abrupt endings of a scene with no warning. Other times it's a cinematic broken up with a loading screen in the very middle of a sequence. The story, as absurd as it may be, does deal with some heavier subjects, and does so well. So when the segments have an out-of-nowhere loading screen, it made me feel like the game was unfinished or in a beta state. The music, audio, and voice acting for the game are all top-notch. There are a lot of very familiar voices here from other games and animated shows that really brought the characters to life. They did an amazing job here. Now my cover... At the bottom of a lake of frozen feeling. Overall, I like Psychonauts too. Everything here, once it gets going, are good enough that I'm glad I stuck through the initial slump. I'm going to give Psychonauts 2 a 7 out of 10, or the good game score. It's a game that's got its faults, but I did enjoy my time. This is a game that's also included with Game Pass, and if you have Game Pass, I definitely recommend giving this one a shot if you're in the mood for a platformer. The $60 ask on Steam, though, feels a bit steep, but if you are a fan of the franchise, platformers in general, or just want a weird game, this may be one to look at. All right, thank you so much for watching this rapid-fire review. Let me know in the comments what you want us to cover in this year's Broketober season. We shall see you on the next Angry Joe Show. Oh, my God.